Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. It's a rainy day in Seattle, the perfect backdrop for a classic romance or, as it turns out, a tragic comedy. OP and her not-so-charming husband, Michael, were living the dream, or so she thought. Little did she know, her knight in shining armor had a not-so-shiny side hustle, or should I say, side piece, on the down low. Today on Our Space, it's bad business. Found out my husband was cheating on me when his business partner came confessing at my door. Hi all, it's my first time here. I guess I just need to get this out there and tell my story. My husband of 20 something years has been cheating on me with his business partner. My husband, male 45, we'll call him Michael, and I, female 45, had built a life together in Seattle over the past two decades, weathering storms both metaphorical and literal. A bit of background. Our story began on the campus of University of Washington. We were young and filled with dreams. Our connection was immediate. Michael was the charming intellectual type with a quick wit and a smile that made my knees buckle. He was studying business and his ambition was evident in everything he did. Everyone loved him. He was just so charming and smart, or so I thought. I never thought he'd be stupid enough to cheat on me. I, on the other hand, was an art major. Our worlds couldn't have been more different, but somehow, they collided and merged seamlessly. I was so shy and insecure back then, I hadn't had a serious boyfriend before him, and I was so shocked that Michael was giving me the time of day. I wasn't really the type to get attention from boys, so sort of melted in his arms and just stayed there. Our paths crossed in a coffee shop near campus where we both sought refuge from the rain that frequently graced the city. Surprisingly, it wasn't ever really busy. It was quiet and we both enjoyed the solitude. I remember I was sipping a cappuccino and sketching in my notebook when he approached. On this particular day, it was abnormally full, and with a friendly smile, he asked if he could share my table. I agreed, and that simple act of courtesy set the stage for the rest of our lives. As we talked, it became apparent that we were kindred spirits in many ways. We shared a love for music, books, and a sense of wanderlust that drove our desire to explore the world. Michael had a knack for making me laugh, and his laugh was infectious. We found ourselves spending hours in that cozy coffee shop, discussing our dreams and aspirations, as well as the challenges we faced. Our relationship blossomed over shared study sessions, long walks along the university paths, and countless hours of conversation. It was in those moments that we discovered a connection that transcended our differences. In the midst of college lectures, late night conversations, and shared dreams, our love deepened and grew. We realized that despite our different paths, we were two halves of a whole each complimenting the other in ways that words could never express. Our journey through college was marked by the challenges and triumphs that all students face, but it was also a time of growth and discovery. We supported each other as we pursued our individual passions, and our love provided a steadfast anchor in the ever-changing sea of life. Fast forward a few years, Michael had become a partner at a high-profile company while I had followed my passion of art, but we remained solid. We didn't have children, but our love had filled every corner of our home, it's just something that never really came to fruition, but neither of us seemed to care. I was so proud of Michael, watching him put on his perfectly tailored suits every morning, heading off to conquer the corporate world. I always believed in his ability to succeed, but little did I know that his success would lead us down the path I find myself on today. It wasn't long before Sarah, female 37, not her real name, protecting her identity, joined Michael's company. Sarah is a bright and ambitious woman in her late 20s with pretty blonde hair, and she's sharp real sharp. I absolutely adore her and I trust her with my life. When Sarah and I finally met at a company party, we instantly clicked. We spent hours talking and laughing, sharing stories and secrets like we'd been friends for years. She'd been so good for Michael and the company, or that's what I like to tell you myself, and I should have guessed why. I'm pretty sure she was sucking his dick the whole time. She sure has a talent for making friends. She just wanted to get close to me so she could make sure I had no idea about her and Michael. And until she came, I have to admit, Michael did work late nights, but I didn't really second guess it. I just thought it was a trick of the trade. Then when Sarah joined, I was getting jealous. I just had this horrendous feeling that something was going on. I asked him who he was working with. He never mentioned Sarah. He said he was at the office alone. There were a few times I would drive by the office and I'd see Sarah's car and I'd call from the street to see if he'd answer and he actually would. I asked if he was coming home soon and he'd admit he was just crunching numbers with Sarah and he'd give me a time that he'd expect me back and he'd always show up at home on time. 
but still something felt off. I checked his clothes and there wasn't ever lipstick on the collar and his shirts never smelled of sex or perfume. But later, I'd come to find out he had dry clean clothes in a closet at work and would literally change after his sex escapades before he got home. Sick, I know. He had a work phone that I never had access to because of confidentiality, so I couldn't even check his work phone. But that didn't stop me from checking his personal phone. But it was totally clean. I even downloaded an app on it to see if there was anything he was hiding. Nope, nothing. Totally clean. What I found super weird and suspicious was when Michael would go on a business trip and he told me Sarah wasn't going. There were a couple times that I asked Sarah to come by for a girls night and some wine and cheese. But she was always conveniently either sick and couldn't come over or she was going on a weekend trip to see her mom in Vancouver. Hmm, I didn't believe it. On top of that, I'd ask him to stay home a couple of nights a week because I was starting to feel a little neglected. Since Sarah had started, it seemed like he was working a lot more hours. He was putting in the hours all right, just not with me. We'd have sex maybe once a week and when we did, he didn't even come. I caught him. He just faked it. Don't ask me how. Some things need to remain a secret. But he was definitely faking. When I confronted him about it in the moment, he said he was just tired and dehydrated. And then I said he's been working too much and he said he hasn't been spending enough time at home with me and now it's affecting our sex life. Well, then he got all mad and tried to blame his inability to follow through on his busy schedule. I wasn't having it. Then I doubled down and said he's spending more time with Sarah than his own wife. Well, then he tells me I'm overreacting and I have no idea the pressure he's under. Then I say I can't compete with a woman nearly 10 years younger than me and I don't know how he keeps up with her. I was really trying to get him to admit something. Then he says he has no idea what I'm talking about. And I poke the bear and I say I'm pretty sure you do. And then he goes I can't deal with you right now. And he packs up some clothes and he leaves the house. Well, the next day, I decided to do a bit of investigating of my own. So I do a drive by his work in the morning to see if his car is there. It's not. I had a hunch I knew exactly where he'd be. Sarah's. So I make my way to Sarah's condo and lo and behold, I find his car parked on the street probably a block away. Well, I park right behind his car and I made my way to her front door. I start recording on my phone. I ring the doorbell and I don't hear anything right away. Then I hear some commotion. I ring again. Then I hear someone coming down the stairs and the door opens. It's Sarah and she's wearing an oversized t-shirt. Her hair's all messy and she's got tiny shorts on. OP, what are you doing here? I'm looking for my husband. I want to speak to Michael. Michael? Why would Michael be here? You tell me. OP, what are you talking about? Is everything all right? Then I push my way in and look for his shoes, but she's obviously hid them before opening the door. I go up the stairs and into her living room area. I see two cups of coffee on the coffee table. You've got company? I say. Oh, P, please. I'd appreciate an explanation. I don't know what you're looking for. I cut her off and I make my way into her bedroom and I see my husband sitting on the edge of the bed in his boxers and he looks like a deer in headlights as I walk through the door. Oh, P, this isn't what it looks like. I didn't have anywhere to go, so I crashed here. Oh, you crashed right in between her legs? Then Sarah comes up to me and says I should leave. And I tell Michael to not bother coming home and I'll have his stuff packed and shipped here. He tries to follow me out the door and he tries to grab my waist and I tell him to not lay a hand on me. And then he starts pleading and he's following me down the street in his boxers and I tell him it's over and I'm done. He's a cheating pig and I gave him everything I had. I was loyal. I supported him through thick and thin. I sacrificed my passions and my own career. Well, because of the kind of business my soon-to-be ex is in, we have lawyer friends all over and all I had to do was make a few phone calls. Luckily, our friends always liked me better after Michael was starting to burn some bridges, so I'm all set there. I wanted to bring him down. He had been the love of my life and obviously I was nothing to him. We never signed a prenup because we both had nothing before we married. We started from nothing. I went with him all the way. I was all in. And now I want what I put into this. I'll be damned if I came all this way for someone like him to cheat on me. I'm going to get the divorce papers all set and then have them serve him at work. Mike called me nonstop and I eventually blocked him. I had a girlfriend help me pack his stuff like I said I would and she dropped it off at Sarah's place for me and she said his car wasn't parked there anywhere in sight. Apparently, he wasn't there. Later that week, Sarah has the guts to come by the house and she tried to tell me that what I saw wasn't the whole story. She said she's not talking to Michael anymore either. I stood behind a closed door rolling my eyes and watching her through my ring camera. I told her if she doesn't leave, I'm calling the cops and then she says, she just has to let me know something and that she's sorry, blah, blah, blah. So I start recording a video and I tell her she's got two minutes before I call the police. 
She starts confessing that her and Michael had been sleeping together since shortly after they started working together. Hmm, yep. That's definitely what I was picking up on. She said she recently caught Michael with this other woman on his recent business trip to Los Angeles because she had tried to go to his room to seduce him one night after they had agreed to quit their affair because he said I was on to them. She heard this woman in his room and things didn't sound innocent. On top of that, she caught them at the bar the night after. When they got back from the business trip, she convinced IT to provide access to his emails. And this idiot had been using his business emails to send explicit messages to her. He probably thought I'd never see this way. I stood there, stunned, unable to comprehend what she had just said. Why? I finally managed to choke out. She said he came on to her shortly after she started and it was a late night at the office. She said they had just celebrated a big win and were drinking and one thing led to another. She said she felt like she needed to befriend me so that I'd never find out. Yep, again, I felt that. But she ended up really liking me and felt bad after a while. But that still didn't stop them from having casual sex. She said it was just a way to get the tension out most times. I asked her to stop and to leave. I couldn't hear anymore. I wanted to vomit. Sarah left and I immediately called the bastard. I know everything. Sarah told me everything. I had him served that same day after making a quick phone call. He tried to call me and was texting me and leaving me messages, pleading with me and swearing that what Sarah was saying was a lie because they were a part of a lawsuit. He was trying to end her partnership with the business and she was trying to blackmail him. And I couldn't help myself so I texted back, blackmailing him with this new blonde and I sent a photo of her. Then he didn't respond. Sarah didn't speak to me after that either because her and Michael were going through a lawsuit that I didn't know about until a bit later. But I guess he did try to cut things off with her because I was starting to question him and that's when she wasn't having it. So then he went the route of trying to cut her out of the business because things were getting ugly with her. The side piece. And then she really wasn't having it. Then she sued. And then he countersued. Well, she knew all of his business trips for the next few months after that. Followed him to LA because why not? And caught him cheating on her and me. Huh. I guess she couldn't kick him in where it really hurts until she got me involved. She knew I had the power to take it all, and I did. Well, I ended up with the house in Seattle, and we had to split and share half of our investments. And a long time ago, he gave me a share in the company, and I still have that. I have to roll up my sleeves and really grasp what that means because he was sort of in charge of all of that up until now. Anyways, let's just say I am able to retire happy and spend the rest of my days doing what I love, making art. I've been able to do quite a few pieces in this time, and I'm looking to showcase them in the upcoming weeks at a local gallery here that's run by one of my best friends. It's not the way I foresaw my life going, but it seldom ever turns out the way you want it to. Wow, OP. At least you're coming out on top. You've got the house, the investments, and a newfound sense of justice. Who knew that your husband's infidelity would be the catalyst for your retirement plan? I guess karma really does come with the side of divorce papers. Cheers to your new life as a wealthy, independent artist. Your ex-husband might have thought he was playing chess, but you are the one holding all the cards. Now you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the sweet taste of victory while he deals with the consequences of his actions. As they say, revenge is a dish best served with a side of financial independence. What do you make of all this? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.